Hello and welcome to the Arise interview. 60 minutes of big questions about the big stories from the news and beyond with fresh insight and critical analysis. I'm Charles Anyagulu. Coming up in the next hour, Nigeria and Africa, are you ready for this? It must be the weekend, and as the American Idol tour bus rolls into Arise News, whilst observing social distancing, of course, we speak to a real American Idol, figuratively and literally. His name is Uche, he's a Nigerian-American, and he's blown everyone from Katy Perry to Lionel Richie, Rihanna to Bruno Mars, off stages across the US with his voice and his swagger. The unique, the Uber Uche. Unbound on Arise News. And later, the poetry of the pandemic. Sobering, inspirational, curative, at a time of spiralling uncertainty. The coronavirus crisis has begotten a new composition from one of Africa's most celebrated performance poets, D.K. Chukwamarije. We'll speak to him about imaginative verse in the midst of the lockdown in a moment. Now he can sing and he can dance. He's got talent, grace, professionalism and dedication. He's got it all. That's how one top entertainment analyst described the Nigerian-American star Uche, who stormed into the US pop universe with his showmanship and his mastery of movement and song. Every step seems precise and fluid in a true master in motion, not my words, but the words of a dedicated fan. Take a look at the reaction to one of his performances on American Idol from Katy Perry and Lionel Richie. I'm delighted to say that the man you saw his blistering performance in that video, the American Idol alumnus Uche, joins me now from his home in Houston, Texas. Great to see you, Uche, and thank you very much indeed for giving us your time this afternoon. So a member of the new school of chart toppers then, eh? Hey, what's good, fam? I'm, I'm doing good. I, I mean, I guess so. I guess so. How are you doing over there? Well, we're doing very well. It's warm here. The coronavirus it is, it is, is still too. just creeping in. So we're not quite as dire as things are in America. But we'll talk a little bit about that later on. Let's first of all talk about 
you, a lot of people, as we saw in that video, mesmerized by your dancing, but also the extraordinary power of your singing and your voice. I mean, how does that resonate with you when you see, you know, famous people like Katy Perry, Lionel Richie, Shaggy, Bruno Mars, etc., apparently overwhelmed by what they see of you and in you? Um, honestly, I don't know how, how to feel. Um, I think I, I've gone a long, <laughs> I've gone a long time without anybody really caring what I did on stage, if that makes any sense. So it's kind of overwhelming. I haven't really had the chance to kind of sit down and think about it, but it's definitely, it's definitely an honor, um, because those are some people that I have super, super looked up to. I've just, my friends have always just called it like, Uche, you're extra. Like, you're just extra. So I always just thought I was just extra. So I didn't, to, to be praised like that, for just pretty much being myself on stage um, is, is really cool. And it's nice to know that I can really just go on stage and be ridiculous and just be myself and ooze just, just a lot. And, uh, you know, people can receive it. Because I feel like the stage is the one place where I can really, really be myself. Like, I can't go to the supermarket and jump on the counter and start busting out singing and spin on my knees and stuff. But I can do that on stage, and people will pay to see it. So that's dope. Sorry there, Uche, but we needed to see a little bit more of that brilliant performance. There was quite a, a big sort of cry in the gallery here. So we thought we'd play a bit more and talk with you some more and play some more. I suppose what stands out for many people um, watching that video, I mean, what stands out about your performances is how natural and how fluid they are. I mean, how did you get to be that way so early in your career? Well, I didn't, I didn't know this until I visited Nigeria this past Christmas. Because I had never really known where any of my musical gifts came from, from singing to, to performing dance side. But when my father is from Uruala and my mother's from Abuja and my dad hasn't really been around um, my whole life. So I don't really know much about my father's side. So when we visited Nigeria, my mom reached out um, to, the, to my father's side of the family and we visited and we met with my uncle and my aunts and my cousins and they sat down and we were all talking and they were telling me how my grandpa who's passed away, um, he used to be like, the performer and the singer of Uruala, like him, and he would have all my uncles be the backup dancers, and they all have incredible rhythm and musical talent. <clears throat> and my entire life, I had no idea where that part of me came from. And so I found out just a couple months ago that that's where all of that came from. Like, on my dad's side, they were all performers. I mean, before they became doctors and stuff. I like that because I was going to say they won't be Nigerian parents if they don't or Nigerian relatives if they're not all doctors, lawyers and engineers. But now that you're talking about yourself, I mean, I was going to get to that a bit later, your sort of background. Tell us a bit more. I mean, you are Nigerian American born in the U.S. and presumably brought up in the U.S. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I am. Uh, my parents moved over here when they're about my age now, and they had me in Houston. And you know, they we moved to Minnesota. I was the only um, person that looked like me up there. And then uh, we moved back down to Houston. And I mean, yeah, I'm I'm supposed to be a lawyer right now or a doctor, um, but uh, I think 
you know, God did his thing because as I started to grow up and my talent started to show, um, my mom started to take it more and more seriously. And as opportunities started to come, as checks started to come, as the crowd started to get bigger, my mom was like, oh, okay, you know what? I will allow you. <laughs> I will allow it. And so uh, she, she just kind of she's, she's, gets excited every time I get on the stage. Um, and she sees she, her thing is she says she never wants to get in the way of God's purpose for my life. And so she's, um, she's all on board. She's my biggest fan. Well, I think that's what's brilliant about all this, because, I mean, I think that just watching you on stage, that if you put your hand to some of the more sort of professions that Nigerians tend to go for, lawyers or doctors or whatever, I think you'd do just as well. But I've seen some of your interviews, Uche. You're usually very chatty and friendly and relaxed, as you are now. I mean, do you get all sort of serious and bossy when it comes to things like rehearsals and the business of your career? You know what? That's a real good question because it's, yes, I do. Um, it's because that's no time to play. When it's time to rehearse, and I, it's kind of a fight within myself because I, I, I'm like a very loving person. I'm a cancer. I'm very like sensitive to people um, and their emotions and their feelings. But when it's time for rehearsal, sometimes people be playing with you and you and it's like, I know how I want something to go. Let's do it. And if you're not doing it, OK, well, we're going to have to figure out how we're going to get it done because it's going to get done. Um, so I've had to kind of learn how to kind of step into that because I naturally just want to give everybody a hug. But uh, hugs don't necessarily make, you know, number one records all the time. So <laughs> and so. I've had to learn how to do that. And Lionel on the show, he had an interview. And he said, you have to put all that nice stuff away when it's time to rehearse. You could do that on the show whenever, but when it's time to rehearse, it's time to rehearse and get it right. Because this is the only chance you have to get it right. So yeah, no, for real, I, that's a battle within me. Well, I have to say, you, you, you certainly get it right. Um, but I, I'm going to ask you to stay with us. Uche, I mean, I'm really enjoying talking with you. You're a, you seem like a very approachable person, as well as being obviously a very talented young man. Stay with us. Oh, You're watching the Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with the explosive American Idol alumnus Uche. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagolu. Now he's unquestionably one of today's top up and coming pick of the pops in America, the unimaginably talented American Idol alumnus Uche. His unabashedly magnificent performances at the American Idol show stood out against the amazing roster of standout performers. But guess what? Uche managed to bang the Nigerian-American drum a little more. In spite of coming up against many formidable and implacable adversaries, his simply sublime voice and on-stage strut took America's breath away. Well, Nigerian and African audiences are slightly tougher and possibly more demanding. So let's see if this continent's hunger will be sated by a single osculation from this talented Nigerian-American. Here he is in performance, the terrifically terrific Uche.
the brilliant Uche in his element there on American Idol. And he's still with me from his home in Houston, Texas. Uh, thank you very much indeed for staying with us. Now, um, a lot of young, talented people tend to be like a sponge, watching, learning, imitating. Michael Jackson learned by observing the likes of Fred Astaire, Jackie Wilson, James Brown, Sammy Davis Jr., etc. Are you sort of like that also? And if so, who are your big idols? I mean, who knocks you out, so to speak? Wait, hold on. Can I say something real quick? Bro, you have the best uh, TV voice. I wish I sounded like that. You sound so perfect for what you do in TV. It's like, hello, and you are watching. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, wait, to answer your question, sorry. I just was thinking about it the whole time you were talking. Um, I, you know, I grew up in, I was born in Houston, grew up in Minnesota, and I didn't really have any type of decent music taste till like people started introducing me to stuff when I turned like 16. Um, I was just listening to what was ever on the radio. Um, I know I I would listen to whatever my parents put on, like Awilo or whatever. Um, Awilo. Oh. Anyways, and um, but when I I would I know I was always kind of drawn to artists who would give a show. I was drawn to Michael. I was drawn to Janet. I was drawn to, to you know, Beyonce. Um, but when I turned like 16 and 17, I really started to, I knew I wanted to do music for real, but I hadn't seen an artist like me, or at least I thought that I hadn't seen one like me. So I didn't know where I would fit, where would be my niche, where, you know, who could I emulate kind of? Um, because all the R&B singers, which, you know, R&B, they're like trying to make your panties drop or whatever. And then there was the rappers and I'm not a rapper. Um, and you know, I'm kind of weird. And so my, I got introduced to Bootsy Collins just in a passing conversation with, um, this guitarist that I knew, I was like, who's an artist you think I'm like, and he's like, you should look at Bootsy Collins. So I looked at Bootsy Collins and I went down a rabbit hole, found Bootsy Collins. I found George Clinton. I found Rick James. I found Prince. I, I found, you know, a James Brown. I found all these artists that I finally was able to attach myself to and who I wanted to be, if that makes any type of sense. And then I finally, it was like an epiphany, like, oh, this is kind, this is who I am. And within the mass of all these guys is Uche somewhere um, because they are different. They are, they are boisterous. They're bold. You don't know what's going to come out of their mouth. You don't know what they're going to do on stage, but you know it's going to be hot fire. <laughs> um, and and I, I related to that, and it was really, really nice to see that I wasn't in such a dark gray area when it came to trying to do something in music because there were people like me before me who did this and who were very successful. Like all the people I named ended up being legends. And so um, those are the people that I look up to, that I study, um, that I watch, how they moved, how they, uh, you know, how they use the stage and, and their shows. Those are my those are my guys. When I'm confused and I don't know how to do so work, where I'm going to take something, I just go back and do a little bit more homework on those guys. Um, and I feel right at home. Well, I have to say that's absolutely brilliant. And um, just listening to you, I mean, you've taken me back, actually, because, I mean, Bootsy Collins, I was going to talk about that a little bit later because obviously you've just released a, a single with him. But, I mean, people like Bootsy Collins, Funkadelic, George Clinton and the Mothership Connection. I mean, mm -hmm. these are people who, are, as you said, are legends. And I think that you're, you're very... Um, you're very wise to, to, be, to learn from people like that. But let's talk about your American Idol experience. I mean, how did you come to be on that show? I mean, that's one of the biggest shows in America. Um, it was, I mean, it was just, it was, honestly, can, let me not lie and like pretend it was this big thing. That, getting on that show was not the hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. I don't know why it kind of just fell from the sky and into my lap, but it really just kind of fell from the sky and into my lap. And it was like, okay, this is what we're doing for the next two years, pretty much. Um, what happened was I was, I had just graduated college. Yes, your boy has his degree. And um, I, uh, I had to, my parents weren't gonna let me not get my degree. Um, and I didn't know 
what I was going to do. And so I saw this post on the internet. It said, looking for great singers. I submitted some videos of me singing. I got an email back saying, this happens to be American Idol. We'd love to audition you. Because you have to do a few rounds of auditions before you see the judges. And so I went to my audition with the producers and the casting team. I went in there. I was just myself, like y'all saw. Um, but in the span of a, you know, of a little room in a hotel, uh, in a hotel, whatever, with the table. And I did my audition. And uh, I was like, jump I was ridiculous. I was like jumping on the tables, jumping off the tables. I was like rolling on the ground. Like I was just you know, giving a show without all the lights or the band or the mic or the crowd or the stage. Pretty much I looked ridiculous, but I think they got it because uh, what happened was I got a call back from the casting director that I was working with. And she had she said that Green let me off my first audition um, to be on the show. And other people I heard had like three, even four rounds of auditions before they were greenlit to be to audition for the judges to be on the show. So I was definitely, definitely blessed in that aspect um, to have it be so quick, you know what I mean, to hop on there. But this, the, the, e the easy part was getting on there. The hardest part was staying on there. That's where the work came in. That's where, you know, the grinding and the tears and the prayers of the heaven every five minutes was coming in because Everybody was so good. I don't know if you were seeing like what the critics were saying, but people were saying our season was like one of the best seasons that ever been. So I, it was it was a lot. It was it was hard to stay in the game, um, um, but it kind of it made me push even more and do things that I never knew I could do, like you know what y'all saw. Well, I mean, it was um, that is very memorable season 17. And, and I mean, you, you certainly stood out. And I think the, the confidence of your performances, uh, I think that's what really got quite a lot of people. But then you, you were telling us about your connection to Nigeria and Africa today. You, you recently, um, well, reasonably recently visited Nigeria. I mean, Nigerian Afrobeats music is pretty dominant right now not only across africa but in the west as well everyone from janet jackson and beyonce jay-z and so many other international stars are sort of mixing it m um, sampling it playing some of it collaborating with nigerian and african afrobeat musicians do you know much about afrobeats music i mean if if so have you met any of its protagonists I do. Um, I, my cousins um, in, that live in Lagos, they actually work with a few uh, Afrobeat artists. Uh, I've been listening to a lot of Odunzi um, and his, he did have a collaboration with Ray. Um, I've always been a fan of Yemi Alade. Um, and so, and I love that it's taken over the way it is. Like we're going international with our music and it's fire. And the one thing that I like love about it, I was talking about this with my best friend is that no matter who tries to emulate it or do it or take it this way or that way, like, it's always going to be ours. Like, it's always going to be ours because Afrobeats music, you can't, if you're not doing it right, then it's not going to be right. You know what I mean? And so, and I feel like we're the only people who can really do it right because it's in our blood. And so I'm so, so, so proud of us and, uh, for making that happen. And I'm so glad that it's going across the world like it is. Like, everybody wants to be, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> It's so, so, so dope. It's so dope. I think it's amazing. I think it's so cool. Well, actually, I think you'd do a pretty good job if you were to take on Afrobeats, I mean, and, and sort of bring out your own version. But it's early days yet. I mean, I think you've got a long you know career happen. ahead of you. And there are so many ways that you could take it and so many things that you could do. And I'm pretty sure that all that will be welcome if it does happen. But stay with us. Uh, you're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our chat with the superbly talented American Idol alumnus Uche. Stay with us.
Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Anyagulu. Now, in spite of the coronavirus pandemic, it's been a busy year for the up and coming Nigerian American performer Uche, who quite simply dominated American Idol season 17 with his electrifying performances. After completing the season and the nationwide American Idol live dates and catching the attention of some of the biggest stars in America, Uche has embarked on a solo career, hooking up with the best of them. He's teamed up with the Grammy award-winning king of funk, Bootsy Collins, and together they've got a new single out titled, Whatever. Take a listen. I was going to say you should see Uche on the big screen, and there he is. We've got you on the big screen, mate, grooving away, and that's the way it ought to be. Let's howl in appreciation as we welcome back to the show the luminescent Uche, who is with me from his home in Houston, Texas. And, I mean, Uche, it's just br brilliant watching you there because you won't believe this, but you're, it's having the same effect on people in the studio here. Um, Tell us about that piece of music and how it came about. Um, okay, so that song is called Whatever, right? And uh, my producer actually brought it to me while I was on the show still. And so we were kind of working on it back and forth. That song has gone through, I don't even know how many versions, like six versions. That's like the sixth or seventh version of that song. Um, and so we were, you know, we were trucking away at it. And then um, Bootsy hit me up randomly on Twitter and said that he wanted to be, you know, used down. And so he, we've been working. And then one day me and Bootsy were just in the studio with my producer and Bootsy was like, hey, let me hear that track that you say is gonna be your single. Let me approve it. He wants, he, you know, has, has to get his co-sign. So you gonna do this funk? And let me make sure it's the funk. And so Bootsy listened to it. Bootsy said he loved it. And Bootsy was like, look, let me, um, I'm gonna I'm introduce you on the record. So I was like, so he said, so that's why he's at the beginning introducing me to the planet. And uh, he said, I want to be the one to introduce you uh, on your first single. And so that's that's pretty much how it all came about. And so it's, it's available all over the, you know, wherever you listen to music, if it's on Spotify or YouTube or iTunes, wherever you listen, the song is there and it's called whatever. Um, let me know what you guys think of it, honestly, for real. Honest feedback, okay, I got a thick skin now. Okay, I've been judged and critiqued to the ground. So let me know what y'all think. If you love it, if you love it, not, love, not all the way love it, let me know and just message me on Instagram or on Twitter or on whatever, follow me on U-C-H-E. I know, I know my Africans, we know how to spell it, but for the rest of us, the rest of y'all, it's U-C-H-E, Uche Sings, um, on Instagram, Twitter, everywhere, and DM me, I've been real good. I ain't doing nothing but sitting in my bed, um, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna respond to y'all's messages. So I've been good about that, I'm bored. Um, so let me know what y'all think, for real, for real, for real. And so it's out, and I love it, I love it, and make me wanna um, go to the club, which I can't do right now. Well, that's that's brilliant, Uche. And I, I can tell you this, I was going to crack a joke about the music, but I'm afraid I, I just can't. It's lovely. I mean, I, I listened to it just now. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, we're going to throw it in the in the rubbish bin. But no, that's not true. <laughs> the shame. That, that's not you true. know what? 
We, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm the fire. <laughs> I, no, to be honest, I think that would have been a very obvious lie. I mean, the music <laughs> is absolutely superb. And I'm pretty sure that the more people hear it, the more they're going to get into it. And, but I mean, I would imagine that in these sort of weird times of lockdowns and restrictions and, you know, stay at home orders and things, I mean, it would soothe your fans, you know, hearing your great voice, you know, it'll help them bring a sense of sort of normality to their lives. Oh, would it? Would it do all that? It would it cure, would it cure everything, all the diseases too? My, my voice going to cure Corona. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, I've been doing a lot more on social media, like I said, than I have normally. And then, like, like, I'm normally on social media. You know how your phone tracks how many hours you've been on using it? My, my stuff has spiked up. It's, it's t- trying, my phone's trying to call an intervention, like, get off. Go do something. Um, but I've been a lot more creative since this quarantine has started. It has been really weird. Um, I've been busting out, like, content and covers and different ideas like every two days like just posting you know like using my voice in weird ways doing acapella stuff doing random cover like music full music videos in my bed you know what i mean just being weird uh but it's been a lot of it's actually been fun you know you got to make lemonade out of lemons so this is what we got to work with we got a you know a whole pandemic and the world isn't going to necessarily fully stop so um, and my creativity is never going to stop, so I got to use it. And so I've been, I've been really, uh, I've been posting some very interesting things uh, on my Instagram in terms of covers or songs or different weird ideas, and on my YouTube channel as well. So y'all check that out too, and let me know what you think. But it's been, it's been fun. Like last night, like I didn't go to bed. I'm not, I can't lie. I didn't go to bed till like 4 a.m. I knew I had this interview in the morning, but. And I, when I tell you, I kid you not, last night from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m., I wrote almost 20 songs. And that's never happened to me. I guess I was like touched by an angel, but like melodies and lyrics were just pouring out of me like boom, 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 boom. So I just pulled up all the beats I had and was just writing, writing, writing. And I didn't want to stop to like, you know, because you never know which one's going to be that second. You know, we need a second one and a third one and a fourth one. But uh, yeah, it's just the quarantine has really like kicked up my, my creativity and a lot of my creative friends have said the same thing. Well, you've actually answered the question I was going to ask you because I was going to say, is there any cheering silver lining at all to this pandemic that you see? But clearly it's, it's inspired you to write a lot more songs and uh, that in itself is quite positive. Um, but of course, this... I mean, the sweeping effects of lockdowns and all that sort of thing. I mean, that, that obviously has huge ripple effects for people in your industry. I mean, you know, who make a living producing, performing and distributing entertainment. Yeah, it, it does. It does. But I was talking to my sister the other day and she said this. You know, she be so wise sometimes. She's my youngest sister, but she be, she be kind of wise. And we were just talking about how, like, you know, it, it, you know, maybe any other time in our lives, um, you know, we have so many things that separate us and make us different and and and, and kind of spread pe- spread people apart. But I think that, and I think one of the benefits, I know, I know this is not a great situation, but it's nice that now, no matter if you're rich or poor, black or white, where you come from, everything in between, we have one thing in common and that is this situation like no matter the entire planet all 11 billion of us are dealing with this thing together and if anything can is has brought us closer together like this um i mean it's not the greatest situation to to to, to curate it but i think it's i think it's kind of cool that we all have something in common right now um because we're so used to being so separate and picking little things about us to 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 make us different from each other. And I don't know, I think it's really cool. But in terms of the music, I'm really just looking forward to getting back out there and being able to go perform and, and you know what I mean? And I'm looking forward to being able to go to the club again, but uh, let's, we don't have to dig into that.
Uh, well, I mean, you, you, you've got presumably. Um, I mean, obviously, you've got a lot of music um, that is is in the works. I mean, you said you were writing a lot of songs and so on. Do you know what next is? Uh, what music is coming out for you next? Yeah, I got an album coming out. Um, it's going to be called The After Party. Um, and so that's going to be coming out probably in the summer. We've had to push that back because of all of this nonsense, but whatever. Um, so we have the, the After Party album that's going to be coming out. Um, and uh, we're also going to, I'm also putting out a documentary. Um, so I'm excited for you guys to see that. It's just going to be kind of chronicling my time after Idol and everything that I've kind of had to go through um, really real and raw um, because it, it's it's definitely a journey even after because um, I'm just getting started like this is this is the beginning you know of something really really tremendous and great so I really wanted to capture almost like my uh, my infancy. Well, I mean, when the documentary comes out, do let us know. I mean, we would, we would be happy to play a clip of it. But, I mean, um, we're, we're getting to the, towards the end of, of the, the chat, which is rather regrettable. Um, but having oh, no, got no. through all, all of what you've got through, I mean, you've, you've been through American Idol very successfully. You've become a, a star in your own right. You're recognized everywhere. What tips do you have for people who want to do what you've done and achieve what you've achieved? And you've got about 60 seconds. Um, I, uh, there's two main things, but I, if I don't have enough time, I'll just... The first one is to really just find out who you are as an artist. Um, I think that's what really kept me on my straight and narrow path, um, knowing that Bootsy and George and Rick James were my people, were my people. Um, that that kind of helped me curate every decision according to that, because it'd be very easy to see somebody else doing something and kind of trying to steer that way. But that's not necessarily that's you. That's not you. You know, that's them. And they're going to do it better than you, maybe. Um, but if you stay in your lane, you're going to kill your lane because that's your lane. That's what you own. That's what you've been doing since day one. That's what those are your strengths. Um, and so I would say to find out who you are as an artist, do your history like I did. Um, and you'll find yourself in, 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 the, in the legends of the past and the music of the past. Um, and then you can make it now. And then also just be ready to do some mental gymnastics because it's not easy whenever there's a lot of eyes on you okay. and a lot of opinions. Mm -hmm. Uche, um, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Uche, of course, the superbly talented American Idol alumnus talking to me from his home in Houston, Texas there.